Jingo, my people, follow who no road. He says, Silence is Simon A. Banjoku. Naim, they carry us into Biafra. He they play the show. No be lie. The good guy, Prime Minister of the Affairs Public Government, in Ezai, went there for Obodo Yibo, Finland. Within government, Naim, they do the wonder. Say, make you join, follow up. He goes sweet you for body. Freedom today, better for you. And you're picking them. I they tell you. You can't still bring open girl raffle draw with big big money when you go win. I they tell you, not be lie. Starting from on the 29th of November, go reach December 3rd. Now this thing they happen 2024. I make a shock you. The money, hey, it makes sense where well, where. Well. Twenty dollar eh? and total winning price ten thousand dollar. Is first prize five thousand dollar. Third prize two thousand dollar. B F R O. No sit down, no. No sit. Consider look na dog name. The one from here gather money to build Biafra where you they cry for sins. <laughs> you go also win to Bergi USA is welcoming our Obataobi, His Excellency Prime Minister Mazi Simon Ikpa to United States USA for a town hall meeting, and Bergi Texas will be presenting the Kola Nut, Iwa Oji. Therefore we are inviting wonderful people of Biafra, friends of Biafrans, well-wishers and all lovers of freedom to this great event. <laughs> program wherever you are joining me from i appreciate you and i thank you for being part of this program please like and share the program on your platform share to family and friends share to everyone that is close to you so that they can be part of this very platform and be able to send information across fellow dear friends and people of the world viewers across the world in this very platform we do not come here to instigate violence we do not come here to preach hate we don't come here for saga or to attack an individual. What we do in this platform is to send information across to the world on the true situation of things in Biafra land and in the contraption called Nigeria. There are so many things that are not being taken note of. There are so many things that are happening that are being told in a different form. In this platform, we bring those information to your doorstep and tell you exactly how things are. There are certain videos that you might not be able to come across on, on the media. Some videos that are hidden from the eyes of the people, we bring them out and share it through the social media so that the world will be aware of what is going on in the contraption called Nigeria. I welcome every one of you and I'm going to share a very important information as we speak. I want you to watch this video from the beginning to end. You will understand what we are talking about. So many things that you can see online. You are going to see it here. So, Listen to this very video from the beginning to the end. I bet you, you're going to enjoy it. Let us watch it together and see what the video has to say. Yuba man, I'm sorry, I have to say this. I'm a Yuba man. But I think that other ethnic groups have been largely greedy, including the Yorubas. Sincerely. The reason why I said so is that now, there are three, except my, my secondary school teachers are wrong, right? They are saying there are three major ethnic groups. But if you look at it, since that um, coup that happened in the is it, 1963 or something, 66. Now, that particular coup, you will see that the Yorubas and the Ufulanis have been so greedy that they've been rotating in among themselves. Now, in Umbu, if you use maybe eight years, at the end of the day, if he's leaving, even before he leaves, the Awufu and Fulani are already hungry for the power, see if it's their bad tribe. Immediately, the Awufu and Fulani are leaving. The Yorubas are already, you know, are already roaring like lions, roaring like thunder. All right. you know, to grab the part, then you ask yourself, what happens to the South? If you look at it now, sorry, sir. Right. If you look at it now, in, in Nigeria, if you begin to rank it, the evils that are the third largest ethnic group are not well represented. The president, okay. number one, vice president, number two, senate right. president, then. number three, look up that's subject, number four. Okay. All right, then. Um, let's, let me come to the prince now. Prince, you're shaking your, your head that disbelief or. 
Well, but let's. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm shaking my head because each time we talk about this thing about the sound, I get very emotional. Because of the sound. But that, my emotion goes to the fact that everything anybody is saying about the federal government still doesn't matter to me. It boils down to what do the people themselves want. You have governors in the southeast. That's where I'm you going. have governors who have been receiving money from now, the federal. Let me, let me ask why you. Why are they not developing the southeast? Let me ask you. Sorry, that's, I'm coming. That's exactly why, no, no. I, no, no, uh, that's exactly where I'm coming to. The governors, the southeasterners, the governors. You know, why haven't they? Because we see a situation whereby a governor comes out and says, look, uh, I want to align with the center so my people can enjoy the benefits of democracy. We hear of that. But when it comes to development, is, 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 is it a question of greed? When it comes to the agitation, when it comes to the release of... Is it, is it a, a situation of aligning with the center or a situation of greed? What exactly is going on? Let's, let's make sense of it. Let me, let me start by saying that power is not given. Power is taken. They need to snatch it and run. No, definitely. Power is not given. Let us, let us align to that. Secondly, when you get the power, you either use it to the benefit of people or you use it for yourself. Let us continue to play out in the south. Other than the late South Mbakwe, of blessed memory, who else in the southeast, as a governor, has developed and has done anything meaningful in the south? Mention one governor. So basically, the southeasterners that they represent are, the the people as governors do not even really want development they in are the, the problem. area. Now, when you say you want to align with the federal government, or you want to align with the power. For the benefit of your people, in all this alignment, what development have they brought? And that brings me back again. So to I'm coming. Now. When back a month, the governor of Enugu State, and he said he wants to end sit and pray. That people should come out. If you don't come out, he will demolish your shop. And I said, this man is not serious. He doesn't understand what is at play. Why is it that the Southeast governors are not sitting down? With all the senators, with all the representatives, with all the elders and chiefs and aces, why have they not sat down to ask themselves what is the problem? Does that have anything to do with the disposition or the perceived disposition of, of the people man as proud? Well, let's say, you know, there is this saying about the Igbos, where what is it? The Igbos have no value. But we have, we have outlived that. Yes, we have. Because now the Igbos negotiate. They discuss. Now, unfortunately, in all this discussion, it's not about the survival of the ordinary man. It's about the survival of a few. We saw what Rochas did in Imo State, using the state's funds to build statues. So, are you what, kind saying, of, what kind of stupidity are you is now that saying, as a if, governor? Are you now saying, going by everything we have seen and the fact that those that are politicians within the, within the Southeast, doesn't, they don't seem to be representing the people's rights if, and probably when, the state of the Afro is, is, is uh, given, will we see any, anything different? Those agitating for the Afro, are they not in Those that eventually, if there is the Afro, that will oversee the affairs of the Afro, they're going to have from the moon. Those governing the Southeast who are in Those governing the Southeast right now. Charity. So for me, as an evil man, let me put it clearly, for me as an evil man, it's not about the Africa. It's about the development of South. That brings me to this question. Let me finish. Let me finish. Two years back, I, I belong to an organization like this. Let's say I'm the governor of We went to Umaya to visit just before and we were very clear. I, as an Igbo man, I believe that if the, the Southeasterners come together and adopt what I call 24 years development plan, which was what we gave to you. We said, like, like Dr. Dr. Moshola said, we asked him, let us take the whole of IPOM and run over Afghanistan. 
and help Abda as a party for the South. Okay. Pre -pre -pre you know what? No, you do know what would have happened. What would have happened is that by now you probably have about seven states on the Africa. And that gives them the strength to negotiate. And that gives the Igbo man the strength to come to the federal and say, this is what we want. Exactly. Now look at, no, hold on, look at Lagos State. Let's go back to, to former governor, Fashola and Ambody. They set the standard of development of the Go back to the South East. What do you have in Enugu State? Please. What do you have in Enugu State? Please. What do you have? Please. I'm coming. Please, please hold on. I have a talk. Let me finish. Let me finish. Now, when Mbak came out and said, stop Monday State at home. We provide security for those that have to come out. Oh, yes, he did. Well, how come? How come that when the unknown government will come out to strike, we will not see the presence of security? What is going on? It simply shows you that it's either the governors themselves are the beneficiary of this city at home right. or the local chiefs. Okay, so Prince, uh, you said something about the negotiation that Ibo should negotiate. You also say that the uh, power is not given, that is. I have two questions. One, who did Jonathan take power or was he given to him? That is one. Two, when you talk about, I don't think that these problems are layered. Clearly, the state governors have their responsibility, which they have failed according to you. A lot of people are doing it. But on the other side, on the other hand, don't you think that the federal government is also driving the marginalization? This present administration is constructing the Lagos Calabasas flagged up on that. The same government is constructing a new Badagri Tokotu highway. Flagged up under construction. These two super highways cut across more than 18 states of the Federation. Buhari built rail lines across the length and breadth of this country. South has got only 40 kilometers. Do you hold the governors responsible for not building a coastal highway that didn't cut through the southeast? A coastal a super highway that didn't cut through the southeast from Badagri to Sokoto? Is it the problem of the governors or is it a national problem? I don't even want to talk about appointments in the commanding heights, both under Buhari and this present administration, where the southeast has been clearly excluded. Um, because personally, I do not I will not hold federal government responsible. I will hold them. If the federal government has set enough good way lines in the South, why are your governors not coming together with good way lines connecting the entire South? Sure. Don't lines, they have the money? Rail lines were only decentralized just about a year ago. It doesn't matter. Since a year ago, what have they done? How many, Even your how many, how many states have built in the south? How many states have built in the south? Even the road network in the south. How many of them are working? I think the problems are layered. No, how many of them are working? Maybe you should take a trip to the south. Okay, okay. how many federal well, roads in the south listen, are working? You see, when we had problems with federal roads in Lagos, I remember the governors then fixed the roads and sent the roads to the federal government. The federal government paid back. Why are the South? It doesn't matter. A death is a death. Why are the Southeast governors not thinking out of the box? Why are they not thinking out of the box? That, that will now bring me. Roads. That will bring me to this question, Prince Chilaka. You know, you've been talking about the state governments or the people in the Southeast, the governors in the Southeast not doing what they ought to have done for their people. And then I want to ask, who is really benefiting from the insecurity in the South? It's because, for example, we also had uh, during the time of uh, the kind of broadcast, he made mention of uh, how the South is, uh, how the big weeks in the South is uh, actually part of the people, part of the challenge, the problem that they're having. And that is what in my powerful talk to be how politicians of the South is turning their back, you know, towards his police or his freedom. Now, we have someone coming up to say, sit at home in the South is what's happening. Whereas Namdi Kano have said, there's no more such a thing. Imapa, who also happens to be the IP of the spokesperson, says, we are not the ones giving the sit order because we cannot kill the people that we are agitating. 
they have also pointed out saying that some people are benefiting from the start of all that and the unrest in the south from the start of the Chula. I will ask you, you're smiling already. Who are the benefactors or who are the people benefiting from the start of the unrest? The governors are the Everyone knows. Even the ones saying that it's that issue. There's a say, you know that every month they collect the security funds. Also, there's a money, there's a particular amount that is given to states that are troubled in terms of security. Where are they applying those funds? The political class in the southeast are responsible for them. Because when it is time for election. They bring out guns and hand over to their thoughts. Do they get to collect it back after the election? What is happening in the Northeast today? We all know how it started. It's a political class. You cannot, you cannot in any way exonerate the political class. Is it the ordinary poor man on the street trying to survive by the day? Is it the one that is financing such okay. madness? All right. Because Does of he time. have the kind of money to do that? Well, big questions. Uh, but because of time, let's let's put in touch on the involvement of another individual who, is, uh, who has declared uh, uh, Biafra in exile. By my colleague here, um, Simon Ekba has consistently called for uh, agitation in the south. Even when you know, uh, Namdi Kano has dissociated himself from some of the agitation in the southeast, Nigerians, you know, have said, "Look," and then words, words that one can consider derogatory, are constantly being put out on uh, you know the different uh, media that he uses, and uh, Nigerians have said, "Look, bring this person home." Now, I do understand that we may not have an um, uh, extradition treaty with, um, uh, with, with the Finnish uh, government. But what is, according to you, what do you think his interests are? Some have even said that he may be sponsored by certain individuals in government to ensure that insecurity persists in the South as that will affect elections. Because we see... Yeah, you know, cases where elections are to be held, elections that will ordinarily put people in power, help them decide on who will govern or, or their person of interest be in power, and you say people must not come out to vote. Is that in the interest of the people? Okay, um, <coughs> let me quickly touch on uh, the question he asked that. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, number one, the non state actors. You see, this is at all. My mind started as a solidarity that, oh, why would you uh, arrest him? You know, because he's a broker, because he wants something. If that be the case, um, we will sit at home every morning to express our interest. So, in, to, to express our satisfaction. So, it started as Solidarity movement. But then these non state actors began to realize that, oh, then that one. So that means that we have so much power. And they started profiting from it. And by the way of profiting from it, if, if you ask me again that, who is profiting? I can say the federal government. You ask me how. The federal government is that dominated. By Yorubas and Yahusha Fulanis. Right? Now, if Yorubas and Fulanis want to have the power among themselves, number one, if there's no peace in Yorubas, that helps them. Number two, if um, they are not as financially stable as you should be, it helps them. You know, so, if they don't want you in power and your source of wealth, you are declaring this at home, kind of like, Okay, okay. Those at the federal level, those that 
those are the federal level that starts to benefit from it will keep it like that. But they will just manage the situation in such a way that it doesn't lead to a total breakdown, breakdown of law and law and order or threaten the complete existence of Nigeria. I'll give you an example. The case of bandits, for instance, the bandits are there, they are operating. But when they are going overboard and it begins to kind of like feel like it wants to threaten the corporate existence of Nigeria, the government will react. But after a while, the government will pipe down. Why don't you react fully to nip it in the bud fully? So the, 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 the federal government itself, that is largely dominated by the Yorubas and the Awusa Fulanis, you know, the, 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 the lack of peace, the lack of coherence, if you look at it, it's to their own benefit. If there is peace in the southeast, you think we want to come up with a, with a united something or you want to you want to align with some party or form an alliance. But if there is no peace, then that may be difficult itself. And now there are like four different kind of political voices, or you know, or, or, or if you, I don't want to say leadership voices. There are four kind of factions that you can either align with one or two or three or all. Number one, that of Inam Bikanu. Because Inam Bikanu has stayed long in detention. He's, he's beginning to do steam to some extent. You have Simon Epa, which also have his own followers. You have Peter Obi, who is being seen as the political leader now of the Southeast. So you it's not just to imagine that. Okay, this southeast, where do we really go? You see people that they are supporting the Namikanu that okay, we in Namikanu, we want the Africa. You also see those people during the election, they will say, Oh, we want to go and vote for Peter Obi. You will see the same people who say, Why should you extradite uh time on effort? So there is confusion all over the place, except for the Igbo ruling elite that are profiting from the corporate existence of Nigeria. That the government of an evil man that has built businesses, for instance, all Jews of Kalu, for instance, will not pray that Nigeria should be disintegrated. Because why? He has built businesses across the land of Nigeria. So the Biafra agitation is mainly for the, the, the Talakawas, the Mekunus, the half not or the middle class of the Southeast. But the, 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 the people that are feeling the pain or the people that can make that happen. They won't want it to happen because it will affect them. It will affect their interests. And that's why you see that Inam Bikanu is not being released. Because they will think that, oh, the people that can fight for him, people that can speak on his behalf, just as the Yoruba kings, the Yoruba police, who were in the people of Tony, sometimes when you walk through life, when you pass through life, if you have not passed through life to such an end, to such an extent that you need some people to speak for you apart from yourself, then you have to be Pass through life. But when you get to that edge stage, you don't have somebody to give up. Then you give up. One of the problems in Africa is facing is not because he has committed any crime that has never been committed in Nigeria before. The session in Nigeria started way back in the 1960s during the days of Isaac Kada Kaburu. So, Africa is not, is not new. Or the, uh, this this uh, Odume Bujuku, he did it, you know, Sunday ago, and a host of others. But the truth is, those that can advocate for his release, Right now, are people that are benefiting from you would think that they are divided. When these people, when they meet with with the president, they are beginning saying, "Oh, for the likes of the late Iwanyan who advocate, people like that spoke, so, uh, spoke out. These are people the late, as well." Yes, the late the late Iwanyan is respected, but those that can speak now, right now, are the people that are. Have the political power so, right so now. The governors, the governors in the southeast have gone to see to see the, the uh, to to see the president in this this regard. You know, do you think do you think it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, just a show off? I think I think um, there is no serious dimension to it in the sense that, for instance, when the president was campaigning and he went to the south, what was the point of dialogue of the south? Okay, Wari. Marginalized. Bari, okay, you want to say unjustly detained in and it's okay. But when the Emiloko was campaigning, what was the Igbo's point of negotiation as an ethnic group? The Igbo leaders, 
the whole fruits of Dima, the you know, a host of them. What was their point of negotiation with, um, let's say, with our minister, with Atiku Abubaka, and some, and the continued detention of Nami can, of course, you cannot exclude the um, leadership structure in the country. For instance, for instance, if the Igbos are being given a fair opportunity to be president, one is without this tension, two, no matter how long it takes, an Igbo man will come there and also release his own view. But Dr. Dixie, just, even, sorry, man, sorry, man, sorry, man, some people just from as, the sorry, man. I need to say this, just as why went all after Sunday to move, but I met in Umbu, came there, he piped down. So if Wari went after Nambikan, but I met in Umbu, I still to release him. If there is no greed in the political structure of Nigeria, if, let's say, the president now is Peter Obi, maybe he would have also released and so that's why I said that you can't rule away the import of political power. And you have leaders now that they are mainly advocating for themselves in the southeast. You understand? So if they make it a point of pressure that this is what we want, well, I mean, you know, who we then releasing in Africa is not really his sorry, problem. Sorry, he not, said it's not to the leaders. It's not really his problem. All right, then. So let's move on to another conversation. Um, Nigerians are crying out over what they term extortion. As the president, President Kola Ahmed, proposed a 5% tax on telecom and others, while had to push his daily petrol consumption down by 92%. So, I mean, the, uh, well, the, the price hike of, of uh, fuel under this present administration. Let's talk about this one at a very short break. Welcome back and thanks for spending us. Now, the recent proposal by the federal government under President Ola imposed a 5% tax on telecom services, gaming, and betting has received strong opposition from Nigeria. Many consider the move an added strain on low income earners, labeling its exposure against the poor. With rising living costs, citizens worry this tax will further deepen their financial struggles as these services are vital for communication and entertainment. Reactions have been mixed, with some expressing shock while others anticipated such a policy from Tinubu based on his history with tax reform. Conversations on social media, particularly on X, formerly Twitter, have fueled the debate, raising concerns over the government's impact on the most vulnerable people. Meanwhile, the country's daily petrol consumption has seen a sharp decline since Tinubu has jumped up on May 10, 1923. Data from the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority showed a dramatic drop in a consumption in consumption from 60 million liters in May 2023 to just 4.5 million liters by August 2024, a 92% decrease. This downturn reflects the increasing hardship Nigerian face, with many unable to maintain a spent standard. We still have in the studio, Dr. Lee, the Marcella, and Prince Francis, a gentleman, thanks for saying that. Prince Chilaka, how much tax do you pay in a month? Uh, you earn more than 150 million. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, tax reform. Tax reform. Don't allow me to go to the next All right, now, the, 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 the president wants to impose a 5% tax on telecom services. Gaming and betting. Away from the other taxes, in fact, the president has tried to expand the, the tax net to 
pulling a lot of Nigerians. Amit, do you think that the, the charges are, that the, the, the reform, are Nigerians also having any benefit from the increased taxation caused for? When you say reform, for me, what I believe a reform is something that gets us from the past side, uh, something that has had to the life And when a government is talking about reform, they're expecting that there must be something bad in an already existing system that they want to reform. And don't forget, governance is democracy. Unfortunately, the Nigerian kind of democracy is not about what about the public choice. And until we, we are able to get out of that, we'll continue. See, when Nigerians are screaming today, I laugh. I laugh not because I'm not feeling the pain, I laugh not because uh, I'm not already inside the past. But I laugh because this is the man who told you when he was in the I was going to expand the tax. I was going to reduce your purchasing power. So, I mean, what are people worried about? Did he say that? No, he didn't. I, I, I thought I had it in my dream. You know. So, but the thing is this. We are faced with the reality of the um, man who they said claimed with Lagos. Fortunately, uh, when, when people sell that knowledge, they used to question what world is like on the top of we talk, we're talking about where we we'll just finished with the blue rail, we we'll enter the green rail. But we know who started them. Show that no But unfortunately, at the federal level, you know, the, 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 the president is more interested in how much money comes to the which will be shared with the federal government. And in this sharing, or in this net of gathering funds, Nobody is talking about ordinary Nigerians. Don't, don't, you think that, don't you think that the reform policies are making impact? Because the World Bank says, yes, this is good, they need to be sustained. Mr. Okoro, I don't know when you become an advocate of World Bank. I, 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 don't, don't, know, know, I don't know, I don't know, the good, I don't know what good World Bank IMF has done to Nigeria, other than giving loans to government without collateral. They give loans without question. And because they are the ones giving you money, that's what they say. He who pays the five pounds pays the four. So for me, anybody that is sitting and dining with World Bank or IMF as regards Nigeria economy. Is a, a referendum is a right to you. Bergi USA is welcoming our Obataobi. His Excellency Prime Minister Mazi Simon Ikpa to United States USA for a town hall meeting, and Bergi, Texas will be presenting the Kola Nut, Iwa Oji. Therefore we are inviting wonderful people of Biafra, friends of Biafrans, well-wishers and all lovers of freedom to this great event. <laughs> watching the program I appreciate you for your patience to watch from beginning to end I hope you have learned a lot for this very program that I just played this video please like and share the video share to all platform after sharing the video now you can go to the comment section and put down your comments whatever suggestions contributions you have to make what do you think about the video I just played go to the comment section and put your comment I will go to the comment section and I bet you I am learning a lot from there and you can equally learn from there. Let us share our experience on that conversation. Thank you so much and stay blessed. Don't forget to share and Chukwu Kukabia will continue to bless you as you share. Biafra government, peace, progress, unity and everything. We move. Airborne.